four years, four years have I been doing this, and not once did I question the stability of YouTube more than I am right now. Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and this is my fourth anniversary of making videos on YouTube. It's been a wild year, full of milestones and new records for the channel. Normally, I would just sit here for 10 minutes pouring through analytics and then wrap up the video talking about my goals for the next 365, well, 375 days. However, this time I have a script that tells me we're going to be taking a bit of a journey through YouTube history and where I am in all of it. We're going to start with the beginning of the channel and what the landscape was as I entered it. Back then, there was sunshine and roses coming out of everyone's mouth faces. YouTube revenue was simple. You got a third of a cent from every monetized view. A view was made monetized if they watched 15 seconds or more of a commercial before skipping. Let's Play ruled the YouTube roost, as they gained so much retention time because people binged them. Uh, binged is what I meant to say, but I have no idea how to spell it without trying to look like I'm doing searching on Bing into some trendy verb. Anyways, the only hurdle for me was to get through Content ID, which got easier with experience. As for the content itself, I settled nicely into going through a list of games that I considered my favorites, and as a result, the content was very walkthrough-esque. If asked, I'd say that this was my Chugga Conroy phase. 2015 through 2016, YouTube Red and Nintendo's creator policy. Let's Players felt pretty pri privileged before 2015. No one contested our prevalence on the tube, and we felt like the system was largely in our favor. Then, everything changed when the... Uh, Nintendo's program came first, and for months, well, scratch that. To this day, I wonder what Nintendo executive thought it was a good idea to charge people who were providing them with free advertising. That never made sense to me. We were then hit with the old one-two punch as YouTube Red entered the scene. We were upset that big channels like PewDiePie or Game Theory that were, were only going to get bigger, while it left everyone else in the dust. In addition, I felt as though it ruined the spirit of what made YouTube so special. It was like capitalistic TV, where you let people do what they love, and whatever channel resonated with people the most came out on top. Everyone felt like they had a chance, because we were all on an equal playing field. As for me, I was forced to get even better at dodging content ID. I avoided the gaze of Nintendo employees who had manually targeted channels with the extortive Nintendo creators ultimatum. Otherwise, I hadn't felt the, the weight of these changes yet. It was a year of experimentation. I started it out with Five Nights at Freddy's, a co-op run of Five Nights at Freddy's. I did my first completely co-op LP in Wind Waker as well, or full-length co-op LP since Five Nights at Freddy's was, was co-op as well. And I decided to play Earthbound on a personal quest to convince myself that it was a good game. It was the year that I really came into my own. I consider Earthbound to be one of the best LPs I've made, and it set the bar for any LP that followed. 2016 through 2017. The Trending. The Trending tab was a terrible, terrible, terrible addition to YouTube. It was a throwback to the days of the site where clickbait was king, and so videos with cheap, grabby titles like 1000 Degree Hot Knife vs. Bullet Ant dominate the tab to this day. People watch it, aren't satisfied because it's not very fulfilling, and click the next 1000 degree knife video to try and sate that lack of contentment. And yes, it means that I am saying that Let's Plays are good content, as you'll frequently see a community being built around them. One can socialize in the comments section while they listen to the LP, integrating themselves with the in-jokes and all of the, the great things that only someone who continually watches the series would understand. Thus, 2017 left clickbait videos in a stalemate with quality content. It was also a bit of a slow year for me. Multiple illnesses, as well as college, tugged at my productivity. It was another year of experimentation as I sought to bring some of my personal most played games to the channel. League, Overwatch, and Splatoon were three of these. While I personally was happy with the content and had a blast making it, it was also very clear that you guys weren't too keen on the sort of content being shown. My big LP for the year was a blind run of Super Paper Mario, which was a gigantic learning experience for me. I was forced to think about what I was going to say on the fly because I didn't always know where to go or what to do in-game. There were even times where I paused the game for 10 minutes or longer just to try and think about what I would talk about. I had some serious growing pains, but I look back on the series with pride considering what it paved the way for. 2017 through 2018. The Apocalypse. At the time, I was our college's gaming club president. 
And I remember reporting on how big companies were killing YouTube because they didn't understand that their ads were being placed on every video, regardless of the content being shown. Of course, I'm referring to big companies pulling their commercials from YouTube because they found out that they were being placed on videos with strong opinions. Mainly content promoting communism, terrorism, socialism, and racism. Begrudgingly, YouTube made such videos ineligible for monetization, but the end result was that ad revenue was crippled for everyone involved, regardless of their opinion. It was a lose-lose situation all around, because strong opinions is such a subjective term. Gun tutorials with over a million subscribers were <laughs> targeted, despite encouraging gun safety and self-protection. I don't have any real solution to this problem other than keeping the things the way they were, but that doesn't mean that the solution provided was a wise one. But the year wasn't a complete wash. In the third anniversary video, someone commented saying that they wanted to see me play Breath of the Wild when it launched. At first, I dismissed the idea. I had just played through a Zelda game in Wind Waker, and so it was still fresh in everyone's minds. and. I had planned to make my long overdue return to the Pikmin series as my next Let's Play, and those two would conflict. However, my ultimate decision was to do both. Breath of the Wild is still going, and is by, my, by far my, the longest series on the channel to date, and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. We're, we are wrapping up the game, but I still, a good, I still see a good 50 episodes left in the series. Pikmin also lasted quite a long time and is subjectively and objectively the best series I have ever produced on YouTube. Two of the videos from the series are in the top 10 for most viewed content I've made, and it amassed a higher amount of average views per video than any series on the channel. My commentary, in my own opinion, was a perfect fit for the series. I never ran out of things to talk about, reaching into the depths of the game game's code or the depths of fan theories on Reddit to cover all aspects of the memorable title. Whereas the Earthbound LP had been my template for LPs coming after, Pikmin is my guide from here on out. It was also a year of co-ops, and as I'm slowly adding to the Terraria series while having taken part in several co-ops. Some of these have yet to come out and will be stored away until the other half of the next LP will be recorded. That LP, I'll actually confirm that right now, because it is a bit overdue, is a four-player run of Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Ooh. Wait, 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 guys, oh my word, look at me, look at me. Ooh. Ooh. What? what is this? What? Ooh. What? January 31st, 2017 through the same date in 2018. I have released 146 videos. Also, right next to uh, that statistic, you'll, you will see a percentage. That is the percentage increase or decrease, if the case may be, uh, from the previous period. So uh, this year compared to 2016 through 2017. Uh, and most of these, actually no, all of them are positive percentages, so yeah. Um, I've released 146 videos, there have been 23,000 views, which is amazing, uh, 151,000 minutes watched, 1,120 likes, 776 comments, and 149 new subscribers, which if you are one of those, welcome! Welcome, this is your first anniversary video, which means I should release a video showing it's an anniversary of you. That's stupid. That's a terrible idea. Don't do not do that, pal. Uh, one of the statistics I would like to point out here is the one before this one, uh, which was the comments. 776 comments is 273% greater, or 273% of the previous period's amount of comments. And this is crazy. It's It was one of my goals for uh, this year, actually, was to increase the amount of participation of the viewers. And with Breath of the Wild uh, having, it, uh, having it so you guys were dictating or are dictating most of what I do in every single episode, uh, that lends itself to an increased comment count. But also the discussion of Pikmin theories, or pick, just Pikmin discussion in general, uh, the what-ifs that I present in that series. Um, lend itself towards discussions taking place in the comments, which I'm really happy with. 
Top videos is a stat that I started tracking last year. I think it worked really well. It shows what worked, what didn't. And so I would like to kick that off again with the view counts. Super Paper Mario Episode 9, 1 million rubies is the most viewed video of this year. Now it is not tracking uh, views of this already accumulated before January 31st, 2017. Uh, it is only tracking what happened after. So while this video is an older video, it's still the most viewed video of this year. Work those skinny little flea legs. Mm, make it burn. Jump like you mean it. The most difficult deck in modern is second place. Stop it! Stop it now, Goku! Please, somebody make it stop! And the third place is Pikmin 2 Episode 20, The Water Wraith, which is really impressive considering this is, first of all, not at the beginning of the series. Episodes usually pitter off after the third. It goes, uh, first, first episode, second, third, and then it, it evens out into, uh, the normal view counts. But this was episode 20, well past that. And it was also a partial conclusion to the series since the story takes place in two parts. And, uh, it accumulated that many views. It's also a 42 minute video, which I'm really proud that a longer video got more views. Okay, it focuses the active captain, which is a way I can... No! No! How many did I lose? How many did I lose? Did I just lose everything? Now you might be saying, well, they probably just clicked off of it after watching six minutes. But no, that's actually not true, because getting into watch time, it is the most watched video of 2017, of this this year. Uh, it, Pikmin 2, episode 20, The Water Wraith is the most viewed video. Let's pluck these purples. Now you might ask, why are there purples here all of a sudden? Well, these, as if purple Pikmin weren't overpowered enough, they are the only thing capable of taking down a Water Wraith. Second place is Super Paper Mario Episode 9, 1 million rubies. 3.14! 1 marzillion! 10! And third place is Pikmin 2 Episode 3, The Empress Bull Blacks. <laughs> we're gonna name him Tom. But we're not gonna call him just Tom. This guy's name is Tom Bergeron. Now, as for Let's Plays, I released three Let's Plays, kind of. Uh, the first is Pikmin. We started out the year strong with Pikmin 2, and then four, three or four episodes into Pikmin 2, Breath of the Wild, or The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, if I'm being proper, came out, and I, we started Let's Playing that alongside Pikmin 2, and they didn't conflict schedules at all. I don't know what this motion was, but... Apparently, apparently this is the motion to show that nothing conflicted, so use that among your friends and watch their confusion. Uh, and those two Let's Plays ran sim simultaneously. It would n have not been possible to have them run in sequence. If we did that, then Breath of the Wild would be the only Let's Play of this year, or Pikmin 2 would be the only Let's Play of this year, or Breath of the Wild started immediately afterwards and is 30 episodes in. Uh, let's see. The le next Let's Play, which I started, is Terraria, a group LP of Terraria, which is a very, uh, it's an experimental thing for me because I'm not recording them really with episodes in mind, like, we're using real names, um, or trying to use, uh, screen names, because some of us do use screen names. Uh, you'll hear that I'm being referred to as Perry, despite preferring Pal, because friends I know in real life call me Perry. Um, We've also had a new guest, which hasn't appeared anywhere else, Colin, and that's worked out really well. Uh, it, it, the stuff with him has been very funny, and it's been enjoyable. It's also a series which I'm adding onto very slowly, similar to ABO. And yeah, three Let's Plays, two, two of which were simultaneous, and one of which is still going. And it's probably going to be the first Let's Play I've ever done that has lasted an entire year. Unless... Okami might have lasted an entire year. I'm not sure about that one, because I was sick for quite a long time. Now, as for the statistics showing uh, the history of the channel, spanning from January 31st, 2014 to 2018, I have released 522 videos in 
the history of this channel. We have surpassed the 500 video milestone, and we're quickly surpassing, or we're about to surpass the 100 video, 100 episode um, threshold on Breath of the Wild. There have been 41,000 views, 264, or sorry, over 264,000 minutes watched. Now, I boiled this down to some different statistics, uh, different conversions, because that's such a big abstract number that it's kind of, it's difficult to compare that with anything. And what I got was, it's the equivalent of 4,400 hours, or 183 days of nothing but my content. So if you started watching it now, half a year from now, almost exactly, you would stop, but you wouldn't be able to sleep, drink, eat, go to the bathroom, unless you're watching my content. That's, that's how long people have watched it, which is crazy. Uh, 2,500 likes, 2,600 comments, so there's almost a one-to-one -one ratio. Most people that comment, and I guess this, this boils down to people who scroll down, um, actually, scroll down, I should scroll back up, there we go, um, have also commented or made multiple comments and there have been and we now have 462 subscribers which isn't a high amount but this content doesn't normally lend itself to having a high subscriber count it usually lends itself towards having a, a uh, average view count average or lower view count um, a ludicrous amount of minutes watched because retention time is crazy um, a lot of videos and then a lot of comments because it builds a community so these are all consistent and it's it's really not regrettable that I have a fewer amount of subscribers. Uh, the top videos of all time have been the most difficult deck in modern, which I released early last year. Uh, maybe, yeah, I think it was like early January I released that, and it wasn't really even a pal place thing. Uh, in case you don't know, I make content on another site called Tapped Out. It's a magic deck building site, and I write articles on that. And so I write articles of deck techs, and sh I show off my brews. And so I'd made this video kind of for that, for one of my most played decks. So it's featured in that article. That article has 5,000 views on its own, or 6,000, something like that. And so uh, it, it makes sense that this video would have so many, so many views. Next place is Super Paper Mario Episode 9, 1, 1 million rubies. A lot of people uh, in the comment section on that video uh, thought that it was clickbait and then they clicked onto the video found out that I actually did get that many rubies and so I, I think the title really is to blame for that amount of views but even so it has a, it has a lot of views. Then third place of all time is Pikmin 2 episode 20 the water wraith which I'm really proud of. That's a fantastic episode. I I almost didn't run with that version of the episode because there's something that happened there that that almost made me reset the floor, uh, but I didn't, and I'm happy that I didn't because the result is, yeah, it speaks for itself. Next next place or next stat in terms of watch time, we're just rounding out the the stats here. We're almost done. I know this video is very long by this point. Pikmin 2 episode 20, the Water Wraith, is the most viewed video or the longest viewed video of the channel. Uh, it has been watched more, is what I'm trying to say. Which, again, it speaks for itself. Super Paper Mario Episode 9, 1 Million Rubies, it's a very repeating cast, except for the third place, which is some new blood, finally. Uh, Pal Plays Okami Episode 79, Glitches, is the third place most watched video on the channel. And it's, it's really cool. I mean, it's... Uh, it's a very old series. It's three years old at this point, and I'm really glad that Okami is is still standing up, and it's still a great series, and people enjoyed it. Uh, it's also one of those things. It's kind of a resource. If people are curious about something, they find a statistics a statistics video, an annotations video that I've made, and so those have normally higher than average view counts because they're a resource as well. So 2018, what should I call it? Well. I think I'm going to call it the end, and immediately all of you panic. No, I don't mean the end of the channel. I don't. It's stop thinking that. The end of YouTube. And I really don't think that's an exaggeration. As shown by this video, YouTube is in a downward spiral. And I really, by the end of this year, I foresee a mass movement from YouTube to another video sharing service, uh, Vidme or Vimeo. 
YouTube's kind of been corrupted by their own success, and they don't remember the content creators that are responsible for their very existence. They've inhibited the natural ebb and flow of popular content by supporting gigantic channels with YouTube Red. They've denied small channels from contesting copyright claims, um, and that, that problem recently proliferated into a third point of um, denying smaller channels monetization rights. Yeah, that's it's it's crazy. I my channel will lose monetization rights by the end of February, and by if I don't reach their their subscriber and view and uh, retention time threshold, which I believe I already fit the retention time threshold uh, fairly easily when I checked, but. Unless I I fit the subscriber threshold, I will not make money off of my content anymore. Which is sad that they've progressed to this point, but it's it's really what it is. I went from bragging that YouTube has my back and has content creators' backs to wondering when my back specifically is going to have a knife in it. As YouTube ad revenue goes down, so too does the quality of content on it. As the quality goes down, so too does the incentive for companies to create and gear ads specifically towards YouTube. I mean, you can see this part already. Uh, the only ads I see anymore are those for movies, they're for Google Things, or Alexa, something like that, uh, and then they are for mobile games, like Clash of Clans, or uh, Mobile Legends, or what have you. And these games generally they're doing this because they can't secure ad space on TV. Because at this point, YouTube ad ad space is cheap because companies don't want to put ads on there anymore because of the huge tobacco of, of companies pulling out. And then it makes matters even worse because YouTube and Google suppress small channels by doing what I've mentioned of preventing you from monetizing, monetizing videos or uh, from contesting copyright claims. So they're suppressing small channels, so it's less likely that anyone will take advantage of the dwindling uh, quality of the gigantic channels. So it is a spiral, and unless Google realizes this and takes steps to revert the actions that they have taken to start the spiral, honestly, in my opinion, they should just revert to 2015 YouTube. Maybe 2014. Like, looking back at Nintendo creator policy, it it wasn't the worst thing that had happened to YouTube. You can get around it, but at this point, there are so many things, there are so many uh, straws on the camel's back that a few more, and I think it's going to buckle. And I think that YouTube, as we know it, will be over, or it will be a shadow of its former self by the end of this year. Wow, I bet you didn't expect such a doom and gloomy video from me of all people, especially on my an on this anniversary. Well, if it's any consolation, despite this downward decline that I am foreseeing, I don't plan on concluding Pal Plays. That would just feed into the decline of YouTube, not saying that I'm a large part of it or anything, it's just that I do reach a, quite a few people, even indirectly. I reach 460 people, and those 460 people each have at least one friend, two friends, if it's their parents, they they probably know about ten people, and if they lose, if I lose faith in YouTube, then I think that a lot of other people will as well. But it would also just hurt me as a person if I if I concluded pal plays. It's part of every resume I hand in, and I've gotten multiple jobs or gigs because of this channel, directly as a result of this channel. Not only did it dictate what I went to college for, but it's now dictating where I work and what I'm doing. That being said, my plan for 2018 is to build off of this last year in particular. The only way that I can see small channels existing in this current YouTube is to pool their subscribers and their fan base into a community, uh, just almost an arch archipelago, if I can use such a colorful tropical term, an archipelago of channels. It's actually kind of a cool name. If I, if I made a network, it'd probably be called Archipelago. That's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, that aside, that's actually really cool. 2018 does not have to be the end, and I'm going to try and do my best to take advantage of the reduction in quality across YouTube to grow this channel. 
Thank you so much for your support. As I said last year, if you believe that I deserve more subscribers, take your favorite video of mine. I even kind of gave you a head start. I showed you the most productive or the most successful videos on the channel. Share one of those videos to three of your friends, four or five of your friends. Post them on Facebook or Twitter or whatever your social media is, Smashboards, Reddit, and see where it goes. If you share it with two people, and one of those people shares it to another person, that's still three people that you just shared it to, and it can keep going on. It's the reason why chain letters are so effective, is because word of mouth is a very, very powerful tool, and it's obviously more, more of a powerful tool than the current YouTube algorithm is, which shows that, shows just how bad YouTube is off, but you guys can do its job for it by sharing my content telling other people about this channel that you enjoy. Alright, my plan for 2018 is to do more co-ops and also just keep on keeping on. I, I do like this this format of doing a long LP and then doing a shorter game along with it, with Breath of the Wild and Pikmin 2 as my example. And I would love to keep doing that. Uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping uh, that the next game that I would like to, the next long game uh, that I would like to cover after Breath of the Wild comes out by the time I'm done with Breath of the Wild. Otherwise, I might be jumping into a placeholder long LP, waiting for it, but we can only hope. Alright, let's charge this Genki Dama of YouTube together and give it 2018 all we got. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for another video here on the channel.